In today's gospel, the scholar of the law asks the right question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Hopefully this is also the question that we're asking. Hopefully we also desire to know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Eternal life is not just something after death. It's something that can be experienced here and now, is to have a life that doesn't end, a life that can't be taken away, to possess a life that's eternal, that's stronger than death, a life that's divine. How can I receive this eternal life? And Jesus asks, what is written in the law? Because the scriptures, the law, possess the answer, and the scholar answers correctly. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Do this, and you will live. But I think when we hear these words, we think that this is something too far away. This is something out of reach. This is something that we can't accomplish. If this is to have eternal life, and that's why it's important, the first reading, which is also speaking about the scriptures, also speaking about the law, in which God has spoken to us, God has revealed to us the way of life. If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God, keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book. This command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it's something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. And so it's not true that it's something far away. It's not something outside of our reach. On the contrary, it's very close. It's already in your heart. We just have to carry it out. But how is that possible? Because the law... The Word takes flesh in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word of God made flesh. And so this Word has come to us. This Word has descended to us. This Word has come to us where we were. And who is Jesus Christ? It's what we hear St. Paul saying, that he's the image of the invisible God. No one has seen God. But in Jesus Christ, we see who God is. He's the firstborn of all creation. In him were created all things in heaven and earth, the visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. And so he has come to us. This image of God... God himself has come to us. And where is it that he's found us? Because to love God with all our strength, heart, and mind, if this is to have eternal life, without this, we're simply dead. We don't have life. We don't have eternal life. We can have, we can be alive, but we can find ourselves dead. Why? It's what we hear in the gospel, that this man who fell victim to the robbers, is each one of us. As he went down from from Jerusalem to Jericho, and so he was descending. He was walking away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place where God is present. And each one of us, in our own way, we've walked away from Jerusalem. And as a consequence of this, we're the ones who have fallen victim to robbers. We were created with immense dignity. We were created sons and daughters of God. But because we've walked away, 
we've fallen victim. And it says they stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. And so this is what's happened to us, that we've been robbed of our treasures. We've been robbed of the immense dignity. And we've also been stripped. We've also been beaten up. We've also been left half dead. And we can't resurrect ourselves. We can't bring ourselves back to life. And that's why it's so important what it says in the second reading that Jesus Christ is the firstborn from the dead. If he's the firstborn, it means that there's many others who will also be born from the dead, who will resurrect from the dead, who were dead and have come to life. How can we receive this life? And so this traveler who came upon this man half dead is Jesus Christ. And it says that he was moved with compassion at the sight. He wasn't scandalized. He didn't avoid and go around. On the contrary, he was moved with compassion, seeing me, seeing you, seeing us half dead. He was moved with compassion. He saw that we've been victimized, that we've been beat up, that we've been left half dead. And so he was moved with compassion. Moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim. He came to us. He approached us. He found us and poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. And this is what Jesus Christ is doing with us. He's bandaging our wounds. He's pouring oil on our wounds. This is the oil of baptism. This is the oil of confirmation. This is the oil of the sacrament of the sick. And this is healing us. It's healing our wounds. Also, the wine of the Eucharist. This is the great physician coming to us. So it says he lifted him up on his own animal. And so Jesus Christ is the one who's lifting us up. He took them to an inn, took care, gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I've given you, I shall repay you. I will pay the price. Whatever is necessary to bring this man back to health, whatever is necessary to bring this man back to life, I will pay the price. Whatever it is. And this is what Jesus Christ has done for us. He's paid the price. He's paid the price necessary so that we can be healed, so that we can resurrect, so that we can receive this eternal life. It says, St. Paul in the second reading, that he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He's the head of the body, the church. And so Jesus Christ is this fullness of being. Jesus Christ is divine, but so is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is also this place of eternal life. And because we're connected to the head, because we've been inserted into the body, because we participate in the life of the body of Christ, we also share in this gift of eternal life. We also share in this divine life. And so, he's the head of the body, the church, that in him all things might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of the cross. And so, this is the good news. This is why this word has come to us and entered into us. And so, this word of God, which is life itself, this word of God enters into us if we believe, if we accept, if we receive this word, it enters into us. And it has the power within it to give us what it's announcing. Also the Eucharist, it's God himself who enters into us. God who with all his resurrected life, a life that's conquered sin, conquered death, that's eternal, that's life itself, enters into us. And so we participate in this life. We receive this life, which means that we're able to live in this way. And so it is possible. It is possible for us to live a life of love. It's possible for us to love our neighbor as ourselves, because 
God is within us. God is working through us. God is loving through us. And so, if Jesus Christ says about the one who treated him with mercy, Jesus says to him and to us, go and do likewise. Jesus Christ is telling us to do likewise because it's possible. It's, because, it's possible because of what he's done. It's possible because he's come to us. It's possible because he's healed us. It's possible because he's resurrected us. It's possible because he's given us himself and inserted us into his life. And so we can live this life. And so this first word is also for us. If only you would heed the voice of the Lord. And keep his commandments. When you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And so to turn around, to turn away, to stop walking away from Jerusalem, but walk towards God and allow this word to enter into our hearts. And so we pass to the Eucharist where Jesus Christ is here. Eternal life is here offering himself to us. Let us allow him to enter into our lives. Let us believe that this word is true. Let us accept this eternal life into our lives. And so, once we have eternal life, then we can live a life of love. We can do likewise, which means also living a life of compassion. It means also seeing the other one with eyes of mercy. It means also giving our lives so that the other one can also receive this gift of eternal life. So they also can be healed of their wounds and receive this gift of eternal life. This is what Jesus Christ is doing in every generation. And just as he's doing it with us, he desires to do it with others through us. And so let us open ourselves, allow this word to be fulfilled in us.